लाइव इन फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन वी आर लाइव नाउ ओके Can you see my slides? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, friends. I think we discussed about some cases of non-union of the proximal femoral fracture. This is a small presentation, and I will not be talking about those cases which we discussed last time. Subprochanic fracture is notorious for non-union. Not all, mainly where the medial column femur is not stable. and we talked about this upper subproc and the lower subproc and proximal subproc fractures medial continuity is disturbed and they are high velocity trauma particularly this type of a variety which i am talking about lower subproc close reduction is easy and medial column is stable so observe that these all fractures are low velocity lower subtrochanteric fractures and these are all higher upper subtrochanteric fractures and all medial column is the key to union or non union in all these fractures and these are the ones which all implants as you can see they have tendency to fail here it is as you can see this was the fracture which was treated by a 95 degree dcs and they tried to correct the circlage wire But this cyclage wire doesn't give us stability onto the medial side, and hence this collapsed. And once this collapsed, the fracture goes into non-union. Here is the other one. Once the fracture collapsed, now the medial stability was established, and that's the reason why after the things collapsed, medial stability established, this fracture un it united. And here the implant broke down and. that the reason the fracture united so the medial stability was reestablished after the breakage of the fracture the implant which was holding it apart so nature wants the medial stability to be done so united because it went into mal union by breaking the hardware establishing the medial column stability i make a statement you may oppose proximal femoral nail or its variation is the only logical treatment in nailable subproc we have spoken about it last time which is nailable and which is not is the main decision problems of nailing in proximal subproc rotation of the upper fragment stability of the construction in badly comminuted with medial discontinuity and as you can see in this fracture 55 year old polytrauma this was a difficult fracture to heal and i felt at that time because of this fracture i chose a 95 degree blade plate and as you can see i tried to put in some bone graft but the medial continuity is not there and that that's what you can see the bone graft which i thought i had done a good job there but it broke the medial continuity once it is not there it broke and then we went second time after 8 months did small leg screw establish the medial continuity establish the big cancellous bone graft here i had put in the artificial the allo graft here this i put in the cancellous bone graft and as you can see since the medial continuity got established and the leg screw work probably and there's the reason why the fracture ultimately healed up so this subprochanteric fractures are very notorious and blade plate is one of the good implant to be used for this subproc non unions medial graft whether medial autograft could have helped healing of the primary fracture in a hindsight i feel that probably probably if i had put in if i had put in the autograft here or a some sort of a block block graft here small fibula to establish the stability but you can see this fracture here the stability it should have come here so there was something which wasn't right even in reduction so this is the reason why it failed and it succeeded now, now 
as it is difficult fracture to heal, many new implants have made entry into the possible better implant category. Just a minute. Hello. Can you can you phone me after Utam Kodavakatma phone karu? Amana hu amana busy issue. So these are the these implants came. This is not a good implant for this. This is a very too weak an implant for such sort of a subprof fracture, and th this will always give way. I don't know why people tried out this sort of an implant, and this gave way. And there was a the compression was achieved, but there was nothing which was there, and this is give way. And then it was easily solved by a PFN type of an implant with the medial bone graft. I feel this medial bone graft is the most important thing in healing of a femur fracture, either here or here. I think I have spoken about it innumerable times. And I feel that the healing is always on the medial side and the weight bearing is always on the medial side. So this medial graft is more important. Do not flirt around with the new girlfriend, femur plate. Old faithful wife is a better implant. This femur plate which came, they have come and gone, except the last one, the Smith & Navy one, which is the one which has proved to be much better than the, all the other ones which are there, where there are three big screws are going through the neck and it's a fairly thick plate. But very few of us can avoid getting involved. Now here was the fracture, another, this is again another proximal femur implant which came into picture. This again subtrock fracture. This again is not a stable construct. And this broke down. This broke down in nine months time. And this is the one which is ultimately treated with the, again, a PFN with the medial bone graft. So these are the fractures which you can feel. This surface implant is not necessarily the ideal implant. If the surface implant, then I feel probably the blade plate or even a 95 degree DCS, if you can put two screws in the proximal fragment, is a much better implant than this sort of a surface implant. Failure of a new implant treated by old implant, cephalocondylar nail, or still older implant, 95 degrees. Now here you can see, this is four months and grafted. This is the other fracture, again grafted medially, and this is also healed up. Now here was the fracture, subproc fracture treated by an DHA. This is totally against the principles which we talk about. And as you can see, the implant is not again into the proper position. There is a no reduction. It is in a gross, gross rotation. So nine weeks it gave way. And you can see it is, it is giving way in this junction. So there was, it was a fracture which had already, this had penetrated the head and so he's quite a reasonably old person. So it was converted to a bipolar, non-cemented bipolar. But you see, when you convert this into non-cemented bipolar, you cannot, subs you cannot forget the subproc fracture. So this, in order to heal that subproc fracture, now you have a lot of bone graft available. So good amount of bone graft have been put in and this sort of a plate with this tension band. Tension band was also added up onto the plate in order to, because this was a combinated fracture, as you can see here. So only the plate was not enough. So tension band was added up. So sometimes the surgeons feel that if you are doing an implant uh, of a total hip type, you don't need the uh, treat the subproc because it will be looked after that. It doesn't happen. The basic trait of salvage of this non-union in young must attend repair. No assurance it will heal. Repair is stable implant, medial plus. Always graft medially. In elderly, replace to end the agony. 95 degree DCS is not 95 degree Indian implant. Indian implant at times it is sold as 90 degree in catalog. 90 degree gives virus deformity and so 95 is needed to have a valgus at the back, which is conducive to healing. Now you can see this fracture. Surgeon did the 90 degree, this, this, 
implant 95 degree put two good screws there very good screws there on the medial side here and this broke down because again this is the one which is not put into valgus you can see this is the way the thing is because the he has gone the implant this way and it is not put into valgus and you can see this is 90 degrees you can see the difference between 90 and 95 degrees this is 95 and this is 90 and in the catalog of this company they had announced it as a 90 degree implant so you can see this is 90 degree this is 95 degree plate this is a typical way in which the 90 and 95 works you can see this is a 90 degree this is 95 degree you can see it very well that is the 95 now here here again this was uh, treated with the 95 this didn't work out and that's the reason this was again treated with the now here as you can see the non-union which was there in a subcroc fracture this tension band and a massive bone graft which was done here so this tension band did the job and everything but perfectly held up ultimately but probably today i will not rely on the tension band but i will still do a hook plate or a side plate onto this fracture in order to look after them now here was the fracture again as you can see this is this is broken down because this is not holding up properly so this is the one which the surgeon did this sort of a replacement without treating the prop fracture i feel this was a mistake because you see what has happened it bent down and it started breaking down Subprof you cannot, I think is a very major part and subprof fracture just by this non-cemented prosthesis though it is not good enough. So you must treat the subprof also along with the replacement. Do not neglect the subprof non-union. Now here was that subprof non-union which happened. Here this is the one which I said or a plate which I did it. So this is the reason why even if you, you replace for the subprof non-union which is a decent uh, option if you have attempted two, three healing processes. Now, here was the fracture. PFN, you can see the reduction is not all right. Eight months' time, this reduction is not all right. Because your point of entry, as you can see, is in the GT. If it was in the piriform fossa, then it could have gone parallel to the lateral border, and this could have been a good heal, good uh, bone contact would have been established. This was treated with a 95 degree and the medial bone graft, and ultimately it started healing up and it healed up ultimately. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, can you go back three slides back where you had done a THR for that uh, case for failed implant? So it is down below. This one? Yes, this one. So which implant is this? Not sure. I think I'm more fond of a Wagner. So it is most likely to be Wagner. Okay. So when we make entry for PFN in subpro fracture, we have to be in line with the shaft while when we make entry for Femur nail, we have to be a little posterior in lateral view. I, am I right? Sorry, come again. So when we are making entry for PFN, in we have to be in line with the medullary canal. That is, in right. lateral view, we have to be midway. While in femur nailing, we have to make the entry a little posterior. See, in the femur, it is seen. Everything is seen. You are, you are, you are going to be in the medullary cavity, but you are, it is going to be lateral. Because you want to be there, so it is instead of a medullary cavity, you do the cheese cutter here. You you take out the part of the bone here, as all of you know. So it is a lateral end. Because the medullary cavity is seen, so there is no question of anterior or posterior in the medullary cavity. Okay. So in lateral view, uh, the entry is just in the middle of the neck in PFN. Yes. While in femur entry, we have to be posterior uh, in lateral view. If you are posterior to the neck, to the 
medullary cavity, how will you uh, negotiate the medullary cavity? I think something, probably what I understand and you are asking, there is some, some disparity. Okay. okay, sir, I will make a slide and later share on. Sir, sir, he is thinking that uh, the pyrifarmacy is posterior and the entry of PFN is bit anterior. That is what he wants clarification. See, I think pyriformis is, we are talking it in general terms, pyriform is here. But there, as you said, I think as, as Dr. Lokhande, the other day mentioned, this is more known as the trochanteric fossa. So that piriform is a trochanteric fossa, that is the, that is the different thing now. We're talking about the point of entry here. Now in a lateral view, the point of entry has to be in line with the medullary cavity, as we all know very well, which is the, which is the junction of the uh, uh, upper one third and low posterior two third. So that is the junction when we find it, that is the time we carry on. So whether it is a totally it is different, I am not sure what is the what the question is asking. And now here you can see the lateral view. It has to be again, it is automatically because you are entering from the medullary cavity. And the full medullary cavity is never going to be filled up because of the GT is there. So here you can see the medullary cavity is filled up. Now you can see this was the fracture. This was treated in a short, short blade plate, which is not good enough. And as you can see it, it, here, the, this was also very short. It has to go right there subcondrally. And then there is, then it came out. And there it came out. So point of entry should have been something like this, right all the way down there. Then it could have been a better point of entry. So even if a blade plate, you don't do it properly, this is not going to work. And it should have been like this, then only it would have worked out. This, it became like this, and then surgeon did this surgery. Now at this surgery also, he didn't, he didn't think of a bone graft. Medially, I think it should have been bone grafted. And probably here also you can see the entry should have become like this, so that the, the whole virus could have been corrected. This is still in virus. The entry should have been somewhere like this, as I mentioned to you here. Entry should have been like this. So that means it will always be into valgus. If the entry is the way it has been put in here, the entry will be like this, then it will never be into valgus. It will always be into virus. Then there is a 95 degree when it goes like this, automatically you give a proximal valgus there. So second operation till no, no bone grafting and in virus. So it broke down again. If the Virus is the main thing which is the which is the cause of max, maximum amount of intertrochanteric and the subtrochanteric factors. So you put into valgus and there is a very good chance of healing. So this is what held up with the screws broken down. So as you can see here, the screw breaks down and over the time, new bone formation is formed, as you can see here. So I started taking up for a PFN. Now, PFN, when you started off, the guide wire would not go above this new bone formation. As you can see here, this is the new bone formation is occurred. So, guide wire will not go. So, ultimately, once the guide wire did, with the ball tip guide wire, you cannot ream further. So, I changed over to an ordinary guide wire and I reamed it out. I reamed it out and I bypassed this. And then I went further. And then further again, the same thing. Not a ball tip guide wire, but a straight guide wire. And reamed it out. And ultimately, I did the PFN with the point of entry, which is, as you can see very well, it is in the piriform fossa. Good valgus is achieved. Bone grafted here. Good valgus, bone grafted here. And in one year time, you can see the whole thing is perfectly held up with a good amount of valgus. So this is the key to that valgus and that valgus is this point of entry in the piriformis. If you cannot get a valgus or like this in a, in a blade plate, in a blade plate, unless the blade goes like this to this, then only you will get a valgus. That's the reason why 
all these operations, the valgus is the main part of the surgeon. Now here you can see, this has been done, this has been the plate has been, the plate has been too proximal. Still he has filled up this, too proximal a plate, and four months time, and ultimately in four months time this was there, and in two years time, this thing is held up. So this was a 95 degree, but still the angle is not very good. You can see this very well. Angle is not very good. It should have been from here to here. It has gone there. It should have come from here to here. So the point of entry and the way it is going, it, has, it is all decided by the jig which we, we have spoken about in IT practice. So the plate plate, if it is done not properly, you will again still get a virus deformity. Fortunately, for the patient, this held up, but still the patient is in virus. This is the way it should have been there. Now here is the other fracture. Again, uh, TCS, this is what it happened. And again, th th this is the same things. Now you can see here, this is an external rotation. This is an external rotation. So this external rotation deformity, external rotation deformity in a PFM also is very, very common. So unless and until you are very careful with the sand spin to correct that external rotation deformity while passing the PFN uh, guide wire from the periform fossa is going to be difficult. So otherwise you will always end up into this sort of external rotation deformity. Fortunately, it does not bother the patient very much till the time his patella is, is straight. So he carries on, he may have a really restriction internal rotation, but still, this is the one which is not ideal. Now here you can see this. there are some situations where double stabilization is better. This is the one non-union, two, three times operated and everything is blocked here. So how do you go about? Anybody wants to, anybody wants to suggest anything? Arjot? do you have any, any suggestion? So, weaving and then plating as well as PFN. I think you have to go stage by stage. This, as you can see, is completely blocked and this is not going to participate. So first and foremost, you will have to cut this off, part of it, and ream it out. You will have to ream it out here. And since this is the gap, you will have to either put in the fibula or here I had chosen to put in, since I did the plate, I had chosen to put in the corticocancellous iliac crest graft. I put this corticocancellous iliac crest graft and did the plate plate. And that, that is the reason why ultimately the whole thing is done. Now here it is, such a good fracture. You try to do PFN, this is always going to remain in external rotation. So with 95 degree blade plate and perfect reduction and everything could be established here, as you can see very well. This is the plate plate gives anatomical resistance, young, absolutely necessary. I think that PFN phobia, as I mentioned, is not necessarily the always a good implant for all now Here you can see this fracture, again a 95 degree plate plate with two screws, and you can see there is a big graph there. And ultimately, the whole thing is held up beautifully with this, uh, this implant also. I generally don't use this 95 degree uh, DC, so I use the plate, plate. But I am also convinced if you can put two screws in the proximal fragment, DC is, is also a good implant. But more, you got to have a fracture which is slightly lower down in order to accommodate these two screws. If the element is going higher up, then I think. One screw is not good enough for a 95 degree implant. Now here was the surgery. It was done. This was a, again a subprochantric fracture and the plate plate was done. I'm sorry, uh, DCS was done. Now you can see again the point of entry is here. Point of entry should have been here. So you can see this is in virus. And it broke down. Five months it broke down. 
so we have to make entry first and then reduce the fracture because you have to in this sort of a thing with this time you have to make a point of entry which is going to be which is going to be fitting here then you will be able to reduce the fracture very well and this is as you can see this is not a 95 degree but all these three screws which were there were removed and since there was a dcs i didn't want to change it because i felt if i change it there then i will not have a hole and that time the plate plates were very much in short supply so otherwise <laughs> I would have I would have changed this to a second properly, and I put in the bone graft medially very well as you can see. I retained this leg. All these screws were removed. The bone graft and five months it is. This is the twelve month period. Everything is held up, but because of the point of entry, still the virus is continuing. So I feel that this virus will give an abductor lurch and a shortening. So this is. It is not a perfect treatment, and as you can see, this was ninety degrees. This was a ninety-five degree. So as I said, quite a lot of people sell this as ninety degrees. Now here was the other other fracture interproc with the proc plate has been put, but you can see there is a gap here. There is a gap here. Now you can see what has happened. The point of entry has gone here. Point of entry should have gone here. This is the way the point of entry should have become. Then this this fragment also would have reduced properly. This is in virus, so the gap remains. When the gap remains, it is going to break down. This is the way it should have passed. So this is the way it broke down. As you can see, it is broke down ultimately. There was no way GT was out, and this neck was there. So at this stage, with the aging process, I chose a total hip, and I did the total hip here with the tension band for the GT completely reduced. And this subproc fracture, as you can see, this tension band looks after the subproc fracture with a good amount of bone graft period. Now this is the three months. It gave way in this junction. So this still virus. So the virus, which actually there was a medial gap, was uh, eliminated, and this became all right. You can see there was a leg screw which was done. This is a one week. Now here was the fracture, medial column reconstructed. So it healed up. This is also point of entry in the piriformis. So it healed up. So all these are the fractures which will heal up very well. Now today, such a fracture. You even if you put a point of entry, valgus, everything is there, but this sort of our things is not a good construct. It's a very weak construct. So I would today probably not accept this as a nail alone. I would 100% put in a plate by the side and also try to put in the primary bone graft here. So this gave way, as you can see it very well. This gave way, and then it was treated with a 95 degree DCS. And this was the leg screw which was put in, in order to get this some of the bones going, the leg screw and the massive bone graft. You can see there was a massive bone graft which was put, and over the time, 18 months it took for the fracture to heal up. But as you can see, this is going on and on, and the healing is not occurring. It is a slow healing which is occurring. Four months. This is one year, and this is 18 months. The fracture is completely healed up, so it will heal up if, in case, the medial thing is there. But still, you can see the virus has been maintained partially. There is not too much virus, but still, this is virus. The point of entry again should have been something like this. This is three years. This is three years. Everything has healed up very well. So all these are the subproc fractures where the healing process. Is a major issue. I think we have seen all these cases we have seen last time, no? If I remember. Yes or no? Hello? 
Bolo, any questions? Anything? Sir, I'm, I'm interested to know uh, 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 the approach or how do you manage to do a, a, a bone graft on the medial aspect? Well, uh, 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 most likely the approach is usually on the lateral aspect. How do you access the medial aspect? Yes, I think uh, first and foremost in the subtroc fractures, in the subtroc fracture, you will have to go from the medial side from the fracture, when you put the bone graft, if I show this, when you put the bone graft, before putting the plate, from here, you push the bone, which will go there. Subtrop you, you know, it is too, it is very easy to put it when there is a bone, uh, when there is a fracture. So you take the graft and go on pushing here. So once you go on pushing here, you will be able to manipulate the graft on the medial side. You will not be able to open it up on that side all the time, but you will be able to put it from the fracture medial side. But when I come to the femur, shaft femur non-union, so subtroc non-unions, I'll be talking about how I open up on the medial side here. I do the shingling and then I do the I go ahead and put in this graph medially. We'll come to that when we talk about probably today or no, probably next time. Or if I find it, I will talk about it even today. Is it clear? Yeah, it's clear. I'll, I'll just try to show now in case it is there. Mr. Tanasha, I wanted to ask a question. When you put the patients on blade plates, do you allow them to weight bear or it's uh, non weight bear? No, I think I allow them to have a partial weight bearing. Okay. Because uh, yes, partial weight bearing is not contraindicated in these fractures. Um, I think it is a myth to me that um, you have to have a non-weight bearing when you are putting a plate. If you have to put bone-to-bone -bone fixation in a valgus position, then the weight bearing is shared by the bone to bone and the implant. But if it is in virus position, even if you don't weight bear, that's not going to last. And that's the reason why you have to be very, very careful that the all fractures which you treat them, they have to reduce in a valgus position. Thank you, sir. Okay, I'll, I'll just find out when somebody else is talking. Because I feel it is very important to know these questions who ask is a very valid question. How do you put the graph medially? No. Okay, anybody else who wants to ask anything? Any of the faculty around here? Sir, what are the chances of shortening while fitting the subtop of non union? Good question. Again, very, very good question. Absolute shortening or non shortening, uh, like absolute uh, reconstruction of the neck and the uh, try to maintain the length is not always feasible. So, some amount of shortening at times you will be ending up in. And uh, is a part and partial of the treatment. 
you try to do a valgus, if it is a virus, it will definitely go into shortening. But even if you put valgus, there may be a bone loss. And that's the reason why there may be a shortening. But there is nothing you can do about it because if your, your purpose is the bone healing, you heal the bone, then obviously the patients are going to be far more competitive. Okay. Thank you. But I would not that if there is a shortening, I'll distract it afterwards and try to get that length, excessive length. Because I think half an inch or three fourths of an inch shortening is an acceptable situation for the healing, particularly if it has gone into non union and you are doing it again, is very difficult to handle that. And uh, in some of the demanding patients would bother about that, that situation. But then still, what can we do about it? It's very difficult to ask them. If in case there is a case, I'll show that. But uh, it's not always possible to bypass that. Also in a femur, which is terminated like that, which I showed you, the last case which I showed you, it's not always possible to see that it doesn't happen. Any other faculty there on, on the... Okay, then I'll proceed further. My computer is hanging up tightly. Can you see my slides? Chef, femur, and kidney. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Okay. Sir, uh, if you are moving on to next topic, I have a few questions and I have a PPT. Can I share regarding subtrop fracture? Yes, please, please. You are most welcome. I'll stop sharing so you, you can start sharing. Who is this talking? Arjot is talking? Yes, sir. This is Arjot. Yeah, start from the first slide. Yes, sir. This is the only query slide. So other queries we have already discussed in previous sessions. Tell me what is it? Uh, sir, this is a case of failed DHS fixation. Can you see the screen, sir? See there is a trans cervical fracture. Yes, sir. Sir, he, we have already discussed this topic. Just I have a few doubts. The yes. medial. Yeah. Carry on. Yes, sir. There is a uh, medial void here in the DHS medial end. So when we convert it to bipolar, then we, so like you last time said, we can put a bone in here or yeah. we can simply skip it and do a long femoral stem. But if we choose to do Indian implant, then we can put bone and cement here. Yeah, that is fine, I think. It's a viable option. If you're putting a cemented implant, then you can put in a bone so that you will be able to get the version correct. But in sort, this sort of a trans-cervical fracture, where you are doing a bipolar, there isn't much of a, probably, I don't know whether the, whether the LT was broken down afterwards. Because the GT is all intact, so your version is not going to be much of an issue. Here, here whether you correct, correct the bone here or not correct the bone, put bone here, I don't think it's going to make a difference. Because if you put the bone here and put in a cemented uh, uh, Indian, uh, Indian bipolar, which you said, then this is not going to heal up. So it is of hardly any use. Okay, so thank you. 
Any then other? this is another case where PFN has failed. So there is also a, a void here, uh, medially at the level of LT, but GT is also very thin. And the other issue is that there are screws down the shaft. So uh, the Indian bipolars that I have to use if I have to do a Aishman patient, then these will the Indian bipolar will end up somewhere here. So I would think it is not right. It has to go. It has to go way down. It has to go right up to here at least. Up to the tip of shaft or the last screw. Or at least up to the two inches below the last screw. You may not go. Here is the tip. You may not go and you may not go here. But if the screw is ending here, you you have to go at least up to here. Okay. But here you can see why this has failed. Yes, so the entry is through the fracture site only and causing virus. So the, your uh, point of entry was in the fracture. It is fixed up in virus, so it has no chance to heal up. Probably on analyzing the fracture. If you have done the dead plate, it would have been a very good chance and if needed a bone graft. If he was young, then you wouldn't think of a bipolar. If he was young, you wouldn't think of a bipolar, and then you can still do this. So you will get a valgus, put it back there, and put in the bone graft there. Okay, sir. Then the choice mm -hmm. is, is still osteosynthesis if the patient is young. Yeah. So because he's a bipolar, even in 60s, I would not feel he's the right fit. In 80s, yes, probably. Or a, or a, or a late 70s, which probably did. But in a 60s, is not a good option. So probably in a 60s, you can do this sort of a fixation. And it has a very good chance of healing if you go completely, put a valgus position, put in a bone graft, and if needed, even you can put in a tension band here. If the GT is shattered. Here, probably you may not even need that. You mentioned the use of cheese cutter while making entry. So that is to make the entry more medial. Now. Entry has to be more lateral in bipolar. See, here is the trochanter. If I say while we are doing the... If, okay. Can, can you see that? Yes, sir. Ron. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So now this part of the bone is very, very strong. So you are going to do, cheese cutter is going to cut this bone so that the point of entry becomes lateralized. So your point of entry lateralized, you, you will remain into the center. If your point of entry is here, your, your implant will end up somewhere here. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. If you say you made Excuse a me, you made an entry here, then it will go somewhere here, which is not right. You make an entry here, you make an entry after cutting the with the cheese cutter, you will be in the in the center. Yes, please. Okay, sir. Yeah, somebody else asking a question. Sir, if we don't have the cheese cutter, can we use that lateralizer that we get in those sheds? Cheese cutter is not cheese cutter is a is a sharp osteotome. You can use a couch, sharp osteotome or anything. There is absolutely no clue. That one instrument is not important. It comes in okay. an instrument, but basically it is this strong, uh, strong bone which is here. It is what you are trying to cut. This strong bone. 
Yes, sir. Because that junction of the, the if you can see the pipe, if you see the neck, this, when you have a point of entry here, in the tip of the neck, when you ream, 99% of the time the reamer goes on the side because this bone is a very strong bone. So as you can see, Dr. Asim mentioned about it, and I also mentioned that you start reaming from the tip, you start reaming medially, so that with the reamer you will break this, or with the cheese cutter you break this strong bone. Then automatically your point of entry will be in the piriformis. Otherwise your point of entry will shift laterally. If you start it here and you ream it, ultimately you ream here, so the point of entry will be, it will be lateralized. I think that point of entry is the most important part. As you can see, Dr. Chandok had taken it. I had spoken about it. Dr. Lokanev spoke about it. Dr. Uh, Dr. Asim spoke about it. So that point of entry is the most important thing which you should not think about. Uh, you, you, you must spend all the time for that point of entry. Yes, Here is the bone which we are talking about. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other question? Sir, can I share another case? I shared a few days back a pathological subprocentry search. Please carry on. This is a subproc fracture that I had operated around uh, three months back. So I directly uh, opened the fracture because I anticipated difficult reduction. And after doing the PFN, there was instability. So there was toggling in the shaft. So I put a locking DCP 4.5 over the plate in compression mode. On site fracture, it was it seemed to be reduced, but in X-ray there is a gap. So this is the latest, this is the post of x-ray, uh, the recent one. So there is still seems to be a gap. Yeah, first thing is your plate is very small. Plate should have gone right here. But apart from that, the your reduction still, this is in external rotation. So the bone to bone position is not occurring because this is not anatomical reduction. This is an external rotation still. But now having done this, probably the only way out is putting the bone graft here. Okay. Order to the sir, I want to add something, sir. Hello, hello. Hello. Sir, well, this uh, subprochantric fracture, when you are using a PFN, the proximally the nail is very thick and at the fracture side and down in the diaphysis, it is very thin. So uh, then the fracture toggles there, sir. So if uh, we use a recon type nail, which is equal from top to down, that would be better option. Is it so? Javed, can you repeat, please? I did hear you. Sir, this in this fracture, we have got PFN, which is broader in the proximal part and thin in the distal fracture, distal part. And if you, it, then it toggles, the fracture toggles because it is loose in the lower fragment. So if we use a recon type of nail or, a, or this uh, FRN nail, which is uh, same size from top to down, then the then it will not toggle fracture will not toggle sir. So all nail there is always a small amount of widening is there in every nail proximal. Yes sir. That is the reason proximal reaming is done separately than the distal reaming. Yes sir. Pattern of every then it is. Separate. Yes sir. Okay, anybody else, any other question? Uh, excuse me, sir, you told uh, to do bone grafts uh, there, sir. 
Till how many months you can do bone bo graft, sir? How many months, meaning? Means uh, like uh, like you told, it's a three months old fracture. What what it is? But if it is a same of eight months old fracture, if it is the same kind, then what should be done, sir? See, to go and to correct out the rotation and everything is a supra supra major surgery. Okay. Sir. So if you have to go down, put in the bone graft here. Mm. Probably you can change the plate to a slightly longer plate. So with the one or two screws going there, it will add to the stability of the discount. <coughs> Uh, sir, I would also like to request you to, you, there is a video of you for angle blade plate and I have bought complete set of angle blade plate from the manufacturer that Chandak sir suggested, but they even, they don't even know what to use and how to use. I'll put the video. Yes, sir. Because they have sent me instruments and the manufacturer themselves don't know their usage. The video. <clears throat> yes, sir. thank you, sir. No, if you type on YouTube, uh, Dr. D.D. Tarnas of uh, Media Kundalar Blade Plate video will play. No, I, yeah, have, seen I have seen that video, sir, but uh, the instrument, they have sent so many instruments that uh, I don't know what to use when. The only guide one in Sir's video, there are only two or three instruments that Sir has used. No, no, no. These are the main instruments. Okay, sir. See, this is the plate plate. Okay. Yeah, here it is. This is the one you can just see. You are seeing this video. Can you see it? Sir, it is not visible. Share no, your sir, screen. we are not able to see. I am not sure if you are right. Now, can you see my slide? Yes, sir. This is the video. This was the fracture. Which I said I analyzed it. I will not have the details. Here was the here was the reduction view. Now you can see the in the reduction view. This is the reduction view, AP and lateral. Now see in the reduction view, when zooming, this will probably, will, 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 will probably, when you rim it, this probably will, will blow out. And when you put this screw here, this part will be, this part will be affected. Having I said that. So I proceeded further and I decided to do a blade plate for this. So here is the position. Now you can see, these are the two instruments which I spoke about. These are the main two instruments. This is the one which is the first instrument as you can see here, which will decide the, here is in the shaft, in the line with the shaft of the femur and this will decide the angle parallel to this. It will go when this part is touching femur completely, as you can see it here. So this is the main instrument which will guide you into here. Now, if you don't have this instrument, you will have probably have a problem that you will not be able to guide there. So you'll have to do a blind shot like this. And this is the second instrument which will be 
So here it is the first instrument I'm putting the guide wire. I'm putting the guide wire, you can see. Assistant is keeping this and I'm putting the guide wire. You can see now it is where it is going. And it is in connection with the, you can see it is lying perfectly onto the proximal fragment. So the, here is the jig which I am putting, and with that jig, this guide wire has been passed. And you can see now, once having, having gone there, this guide wire is here perfect, this is in the center perfect, and the whole, whole reduction is being held. So now once having done that, this is the other main instrument, which is going to give you a cutting path for the blade plate. So I'm just first with the osteotome, I'm making the path. This is the osteotome in parallel to the guy. And then this is the cheese, this is the cutting chisel, which has to go parallel This is the cutting I have made the same osteotome and it's the cutting chisel which goes either above or below. Here the below is too little in space, so I have chosen it going above. So this is the way in which it is going. And in the lateral view, now you can see this is the osteotome and now the chisel, that, that chisel which will again give me that the blade will come right there. So either above or below, wherever you go, you make a cut into the outer cortex in order to pass the blade. This is not really required. You can put a few drill holes and make up. Now here is that, here is that, uh, this is the cutter which is, which is really put it onto the shaft. So you can see this is put on the shaft so that you know that it will be absolutely parallel to the shaft. You must spend time to put this, a certain must carry on and put it perfectly there on the shaft. Now he put it on the shaft. Now you put in the cutter and hammer the cutter. So it will go exactly in the same direction which you desire. So these are the two main steps that first was that guide wire. And now you're putting this plate cutter. Now you, you in a lateral view, you can see is going properly, right in the desired position. In the AP view, it has gone. In the lateral view, it has gone. Now once it has gone and you select it, now you put in a plate. The, the, this is the instrument to hold the plate. And there is an the instrument to tighten it. When I was showing this video, I didn't have that uh, spanner which is going to be tightened in the set. It had, it had probably been misplaced. So, and there, there you can beautifully, you can tighten. Now, having done that tighten, here is the second one. After removing for, for the, it will also come. Now, here I have put in the plate again properly. I put in the plate properly and I am putting the plate and on the, on the guide wire that, uh, that blade is again moving. As you can see here. Lovely. Here is the plate, perfectly there. The now, the now the plate is traveling further. You can see that very well. And this plate is parallel, perfectly. So now the, this is the last one which you are doing it. So that there, there is a small point, small pointed. Uh, so you are you are here. This is the one which you are going to. You are going to hammer it well in the last one, which will go near the board. Now you can see, you pushed it last and you can see you are you're just going to the board. So you will hammer it further. And now the second thing is to enhance the fixation in the head. The first screw is passed in calcar as a leg screw. So in the first hole, you can see I am passing the 4.5 drill point first. And now I am putting the sleeve. This is the 4.5 and I am putting the sleeve because otherwise we, this is a strong bone.
Now here is the here is the one. Here is the sleeve. This is a strong bolt. And here is the calca. So this, if you don't put a sleeve and you try to well, well, it, oh. well, well, okay. the drill will skid. The drill will skid. So this is the reason why you putting like a leg screw. There's a four point. Uh, this, this is the four point two, three point seven. Uh, sorry. Yeah, there's a 3.5 and it is going there inside. So now, now I'm, I'm going to drill it further so it will go in the calcar perfectly straight, you can see. And now I'm putting the screw there. So now there is perfect thing and now I'm giving the compression to the fracture. This is the second case which I tell and did the same thing. These main two instruments are the ones which decide. Others are to put the plate. And you can see, perfect reduction. Now, even if you have gone like this, this is the way you desire. But by mistake, if you are not putting this properly, and th this blade goes there, but the plate goes off the bone here. So now you can take it out and put the, put the plate back there so that it will go over there. And this will not harm it. If you put in a DHS or DCS, then you have made a big hole. Here it is only a small slot we have made. So even if you make a, another slot like this, it will not make any difference, which will go there. So it is the main benefit of this instrument because the, even if you have done the mistake, you can cover it very well. The cut we make, it has to be up to deep into the head where we intend the up till the point where we intend the blade to go yes yes sir the length of the blade is uh, uh, variable or uh, we have the, uh, okay so how uh, is there any instrument to measure that also sir when you put in the guide wire you measure that guide wire okay, okay sir okay sir that's it now next time or sometime i will be uh, we have designed a little slightly more uh, surgeon friendly instruments. This, this video is made from the AO instrument, but now, as I said, with one company I have uh, collaborated uh, without financial help, obviously. Um, they have been, I uh, advise them to be making the instrument which we will show you sometime during the course. May not be next time, but sometime during the course. Which is far more patient, far more certain friend. This any of the faculties are here? Yes, sir, I am here. Ato Jarakush. Will you please show some cases? Yes, sir, I I can show you. One case I will show you now. Two, three cases in the meantime, I leave. Okay. Uh -huh. Sir, what type of osteotom should be used while making that? Uh, huh? Width of uh, that osteotom? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Leg path cutter. It is a, you got to see that it is the same width. It has to be sharp, otherwise you, you will not be able to cut properly. And it is mainly to cut the outer thick, outer hard cortex, not all the way down. Yes, sir. It's called sitting chisel. Sitting chisel, yeah, that's right. I, I was forgetting the name. So, good evening, sir. Uh, I am presenting a very interesting case. And uh, this is a 45 year female. It's a ipsilateral injury of the shaft and hip, you can see here. It's a cervical basal fracture mostly. And it's a vertical fracture. So you cannot call it as a cervical measure or you can also call it as a trans-cervical. 
it's because the anteriorly the capsule is at the intertrochanteric line and in posteriorly it is at the intertrochanteric crest so this x ray revealed a displaced fracture of the shaft with small comminution also is there so then how to plan anybody wants to take, uh, say something because already you have seen the lecture and you have also been taught how to handle the ipsilateral shaft and uh, neck fractures anybody sir is there uh, any uh, other deformity with this patient because i can see the canal is very narrow no no there okay. are no other deformity that is she is healthy uh, 45 year old okay so then i would uh, prefer the pfn in this one pfn yes sir long pfn why uh, because there is a, also a vertical fracture of that uh, neck and also sharp so, so i will uh, i will prefer a single implant sir anybody kupagonella nail and valgus osteotomy for that why do you want to do a primary valgus osteotomy because of that vertical fracture no it's a fresh fracture it is not a subcapital fracture it's a cervical basal fracture and do you this is a retrograde Segmental fracture is going to be a job to fix up both the fractures. Because when you do the valgus osteotomy, you can't put a nail. You have to put in a plate, and plate yes. will disappear somewhere. Yes. I would like to go for uh, DHS uh, with a DFN and try to negotiate the uh, proximal locks of DFN through the. A screw of DHS plate only. That is, a, I think, a very good option, Harjot. So we have to tackle this injury with the two separate implants. Uh, you can use a DHS and uh, you can use also a supracondylar nail. But probably with a single implant, you need a very expertise, and you can find that the cervical basal fracture this is going to the pyriformis fossa here. So, if you use a nail, what will happen? There will be a separation of the trochanter, and the patient will have a virus of the neck, and probably will be able to negotiate through the shaft. But either of the two fracture will go into malposition if you use a single implant. So, what is the preference first? Whether to tackle the first the neck part or femur part? Arjunji. The neck part first because it is more challenging and prone to having more complication. Neck part. So, in priority should be given to the fixation of the neck part. That is the most important thing because any complication will lead into the vascular necrosis or non-union which will be very difficult to tackle later on. If you get something in the shaft that can be tackled very easily, and slightest malunion is not acceptable in the fracture neck of the femur. As compared to the femur, some malalignment may be tolerated, but not in the neck. Therefore, neck is the priority and shaft is the next. So what we will do first now? Harjot? The provisional fixation with uh, two or three K wires after giving traction. Mm. Where is the traction? Then, will not enough because there is already a segment is there. The traction. Sir, will sir first. Hello, yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, first uh, we can uh, fix the shaft with the temporary fixator. Fixator. Yeah, temporary fixator. Make it a single segment so that we can rotate it and uh, reduce the neck. Are you talking about the X-fix? Yes, a temporary external fixator. Open, put the stand pin in shaft and then do open reduction for that. You can hold with the clamp. No, I mean to say without opening the fracture site, we can just put an external fixator and make a shaft a single, uh, I mean, segment and then we can easily rotate it to reduce the neck. But when you give the traction, 
at which part the traction is going to work the most initially at the distal track. That's good. So that is going yes, to sir. that is going to be reduced quite well. And the, and the proximal fracture does not need any traction to reduce. Can you in proximal segment and then open reduce the fracture? Hello. Okay. So actually, the what is the treatment of choice is first you concentrate on a reduction of a proximal fragment by close method or by percutaneous manipulation or by a little open reduction. Do a CC screw first, then DHS, apply a plate and fix the plate with a one screw proximally and leave rest of the screws empty. And then you, after stabilizing this, you go ahead with the DFN so that you have stabilized the neck, it will not, it is not going to displace. And then afterwards, if you do a DFN, means distal femoral nail, then try to match the hole with that uh, distal holes of that uh, supracondylar nail with the DHS, one of the screw or two may be masked or may not be. But it is possible that if the single screw also masked, it will be a boon for a added stability. So that is how it should be approached. So what surgeon did? Surgeon done a very wonderful surgery of a PFN and tackled with a uh, this uh, proximal fragment as well as the distal fragment by a mini open reduction of the shaft and a reduction, close reduction of the proximal femur. And lateral X-ray is not uh, here. It's uh, just a post-operative X-ray. And you can see here that the anatomical restoration is there. There is just some virus on uh, measurement. And you will find that the fracture shaft femur, there is a butterfly fragment is lying there. There is a, some distraction is still there. But we can say it is a somewhat a acceptable thing. But what has happened in the second month? You will find there is a virus collapse at the neck fragment, that means the stability of the fixation was a questionable and probably which was the wage effect, which was not visible in the first X-ray, you can see here in the second X-ray, it, therefore it has gone into the virus. And in the subsequent, after third month, you can progressive virus of the neck and shaft, it still it is holding the fracture well. So this is after a three months if the patient come to you and you can see here also there is a, some migration of the inferior screw and also the superior screw it is holding and there is a gap at, at the superior part of the neck. Suppose the patient has come for a second visit to you, what you will advise to do? Patient is limping, unable to walk even on the crutches. X-ray revealed there is a virus, there is a shortening, and patient have a, has also a, some external rotation deformity. So this is how it is. So we have to advise that this should be revised. This should be revised, and how to revise it? We'll have to remove everything, do a perfect anatomical reduction of a proximal fragment, and then you have to go with the DFN that can be done again. And in this case, probably if the virus is not corrected by primary thing, probably have to do for a, a high type of a vulgus osteotomy. There are two types of vulgus osteotomy. One is above the lesser trochanter and other is the below the lesser trochanter. So in this case, probably we'll have to go at the level, above the level of the lesser trochanter because we cannot compromise the length of the DFN in this case. So this is how it is, but patient continued to walk on this and after seven months, there is a distraction at the fracture site of the femur. There is a virus collapse. Superior screw is going into the joint, hip joint, and the inferior screw is out. That is, it is producing a reverse oblique phenomena. It's a classical complication of a two-screw system. And I think this is the one of the most worst complication of the proximal femoral nail. 
uh, where so many people say that it is one of the wonderful uh, plant. Even the literature also says. And previously, I, I used to thought about it, and I have done number of cases and published near about three papers on this thing. But with the listening with the Guruji, the Nasar, then I started retrospectively seeing my result, and I found that whenever there is a lateral wall, there is a problem of the two screw system and complications are many, many which are not described in Indian literature because we also, most of the time, uh, we don't say a true things. So this is how it is. Then what has happened, I have done. Same thing I did, as you can see here, I did a vulgus osteotomy with condylar blade pit augmented with a cervical screw going into the neck, holding a de-rotation screw superiorly, vulgus osteotomy above the laser rotator, and I tried to match the one of the screw hole with the uh, supracondylar nail, and the butterfly fragment was again compressed and copious bone graft circumferentially after decompression, singling, and everything was done but I could not compress the fracture because of uh, that day. And therefore, and it was very impossible even after seven months uh, where to apply the compression device. So this was the X-ray post-operative. It was looking very good. And I was also very satisfied. Patient regained the length, stability. And I thought that the, this will work because there are bone grafts. As soon as the pain subsided, the patient started walking and weight bearing, and you can see that this is after the third month. Everything was all right, but the gap persisted. The bone grafts were still there, and it was a supracondylar multi lock tail. There was a good hold. I thought it will work, and what has happened? You see, after a third month, there was some problem here occurring, and if you see very carefully there was some virus collapse at the femoral side. You can see here and there is some problem is going on. And still I continued, there was a distraction, the bone graft never incorporated and because of the distraction. So ultimately what has happened? Ultimately the fracture gone into a failure. So it was a good fixation of the proximal neck and the a proximal fragment, but inadequate fixation and lever arm was short of a supracondylar nail. It would have been a longer nail, and therefore, again, I was in trouble. But patient was again came for revision, and seeing that I will do something good, he must have consulted so many other people also. But you can see how the failure has occurred. It's because of the tip of that supracondylar nail has. Uh, uh, given a stress riser effect and the there is a he she fell down slightly and there was a wedge which you can see has separated and the everything is felt now what he will do it's a very complicated case now one year is fast this is after a primary injury it is 11 months i think so it's 11 month and uh, then he again came to me in uh, uh, april month so what now we should do it? It's a very difficult problem. I consulted Tanna sir and also the GS Kulkarni sir and they said that it's a very difficult test and you can do again a revision surgery by a long nail. So what I did again, you can see here. So this is how I have used it. I used a long nail. I have compressed the fracture. I kept that abduction after the same and fixed now with the DHS with additional screw and then two screws are going through the uh, this uh, distal femoral nail and you can see here now these are the screws are real the fracture is this is immediate post op and you can see here this is how it is the immediate post op and this is the X-ray after now it's a Two months now, I think the fracture is here consolidating. She is no pain at the fracture side here. 
she is walking but still now i am in doubt whether this febrile head is surviving or not because she has no pain she has a good range of movement still i am in doubt whether the fracture may go for a vascular necrosis so this is how it is it's a wonderful case anybody wants to comment on this thing so the screws the distal locking screws of dfn they seem a bit different like thicker on the head side and thinner on the uh, far cortex side where this one here yes sir this one no this is multi lock nail this is multi lock screws are there they are, they are actually <laughs> obliquely placed therefore they are looking like this. it is a very <laughs> Good multi-lock nail. It has two medial lateral and two oblique screws. Two oblique. So, screws. is there any specific trick to use Muller's compression device, or just put a screw and compress it? Is there any specific trick also? There is no trick. We have to put the hook into one of the hole, then drill it and do do a tightening. So, there with is... locking plate also that can be used because locking yes, plate doesn't have. Yes, fine. Whenever there is a hole, you can keep the hook. That is no problem. Sir, any trick to match that uh, crystal hole of uh, DFN with the uh, DHS screw hole? So, don't first lock the proximal screws here. Yeah, this is, these are the screws here. Distal screw. Don't lock these screws. Yes. Go on rotating here probably. Therefore, you will see here it has gone slightly inside. Yes. It just to in the uh, process of matching. So, it is always there. So, don't lock the yes. distal. Uh, this is, you can say, this is the distal. This is the proximal. Don't lock. Then yes. match it, and then you lock it. Yes. Then you lock. Then you lock this. If you lock it, this one, then it will not be able to match this thing. Then you will have to change the barrel, and yes. it's uh, probably it's a very difficult job. Thank you. Hello. Hello. I'm here, Doctor Sam. Ah, sir. Has it worked in the primary surgery? We have used a shorter angleable plate. So with the similar nail, if you if you had used a longer angleable plate, so will uh, it has served the purpose? Yes, it would have served the purpose because uh, that time I did not have a long condylar blade plate. I had a DHS doctor, but I planned it like this that I will use the condylar blade plates in this case, and therefore there is some mental block in that case, and I did not have their day. A supra condylar nail up a forty centimeter. It was only thirty five. So I ordered the forty, and then I did the surgery. Okay. Please see the intellectual honesty of Dr. Gaji Gune. He is willing to accept his mistake, which all of us do it often okay. enough. But the reason is that ultimately you will correct mistake if you are aware of your mistake. <laughs> Otherwise, we will continue with it. Compliments, Gadi Gunnar. Very good. We appreciate, sir. We appreciate. Yes, Dr. Sangeet. Dr. Sangeet is showing a case. And Gadi Gunnar, you can keep it ready. I have also kept two, three cases ready. We will just show the cases. I can show one more case. There is no problem. Uh, sir, you can start. You Dr. can. You are ready, Sangeet? Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, let him fi let him finish. May finish kar do kya? Yeah, yeah, please. Ah, okay. 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 Light so from beginning. So, so this is the fracture of the femur in a hundred and ten kg old uh, weight of the baby. lady. She is a young lady. What to do? This is the segmental fracture, and if you go for this, there is a very very narrow canal. It's a very narrow canal, displaced fracture, and you can see here there is a small. Uh, we can say oblique or spiral fracture like this. It is high subtrochanteric and distal, and there is an intercalary fracture. 110 kg. 
फैटी लेडी इफ यू कैन सी गाड़ी को ने जंक्शन ऑफ दैट सेगमेंटल फ्रैक्चर एंड एंड द डिस्टर फ्रैक्चर इन अ डिस्टर फ्रैक्चर एंड दिस फ्रैक्चर है इन डिफरेंट रोटेशन यस सर एंड देयर देयरफॉर इट लुक्स नैरो दैट द रीजन यू फील इट इज नैरो यस यस दैट आई वांट टू गो परंतु आप इतने चानाक्ष हो सर कि आपने पहचान लिया बराबर सो दिस इज हाउ इट इज तो व्हाट टू शुड बी डन व्हाट शुड बी डन हरजोत आई थिंक ओपन रिडक्शन होल्ड विद द क्लैम्प एंड देन डू अ लॉन्ग पीएफ एन ओनली लॉन्ग पीएफ है टेम्परेरी फिक्स प्रोक्सिमल फ्रैक्चर एंड देन लॉन्ग पीएफ कैसे टेम्पररी फिक्स करेंगे यूनिकोर्टिकल प्लेट यूनिकॉर्टिकल प्लेट यस वन ऑफ दी ऑप्शन इज यूनिकॉर्टिकल प्लेट एंड देन सर्जरी यस इट्स अ गुड ऑप्शन गुड ऑप्शन दैट इज प्रोवाइडेड यू डोंट गेट द रिडक्शन इफ यू डू गेट अ रिडक्शन ऑफ द प्रोक्सिमल फ्रैगमेंट वंस यू गेट अ रिडक्शन यू विल बी एबल टू नेगोशिएट द गाइड वायर इन द प्रोक्सिमल फ्रैगमेंट एंड देन इट इज ओनली द डिफरेंट फ्रैगमेंट बिकॉज़ वंस यू गेट अ रिडक्शन ऑफ द प्रोक्सिमल फ्रैगमेंट which is probably even you you may use a you may use a subcutaneous uh, bone holding forceps if required yeah. otherwise with the joystick you will be able to get it i think so what i did this is the i did a pfn surgery and uh, that was done in a lateral position actually you can see here these are the all procedures So what I did first, you can see here. If you carefully see this thing, I passed a sand spin here first in the middle fragment. Sand spin in here, percutaneous sand spin here, and that has stabilized. So whenever I get a segmental fragment, I forget about the distal fragment. I first concentrate on the proximal fragment where we need a first negotiation of the. Rem, uh, this uh, cannulated reamer, or a guide wire. You can see here. So what I did with this manure, I tried to stabilize the fracture. Then I put here a nine mm this reamer inside. So if you pass that nine mm reamer below the lesser trochanter, you can manipulate the proximal fragment. So you have stabilized the distal fragment, uh, middle fragment. then you can manipulate the proximal fragment as soon as you get the alignment we have to pass the guide wire from the proximal fragment and then what we have to do then you forget about this pro uh, uh, proximal fragment you are reamer up 9 mm or 8 mm and give from the middle fragment we have to withdraw that uh, pin slightly and make it a unique article after making a unique articular your passage of the 8 mm or 9 mm cannulated reamer along with the guide wire will touch to the distal fragment then what you do you pass another pin here stinman pin also you can pass and do a percutaneous manipulation because see it so thigh you can see here how the thigh is and then as soon as you give a greeting sensation and You have seen the position, whatever it may be. Then just pass your guide wire into the distal fragment. So this is how a reduction percutaneous up a segmental fracture that I have do it. Then as soon as you pass your guide wire, then what you can do, you can go on reaming with the mostly hand reamers, and last reaming is by then motorized reamers. So this is how it is. So once it is done, you can see here how it is, and percutaneous things are done, and ultimately you can see the fracture has united in four months, and she is happy as well as I am happy with the good callus formation here, multi-lock polar screw, everything long PFN, and in this case we have to whenever you do a proximal femoral nailing. Your entry point should be the medial to the tip or the uh, trochanter, and that is known as a trochanteric fossa. It's not a piriformis fossa; it's a trochanteric fossa. 
and uh, through that trochanteric fossa, you have to pass the nail to the perfect anatomical restoration. Proximal fragment, you have failed to see whether it is fractured or not, and the distal fragment, you can see here. So this is how it is. You can see a small incision here, small one or two pins. Patient is able to do all flexion, extension within six months, sees everything is fine, and you can see here. So this is how it is, a segmental femoral fracture in a very, very fatty lady, a difficult job. I am lucky that I could get a close reduction. <laughs> but as you said, open reduction, sometime it is required in one of the fracture when the reduction doesn't come. Have you used the F tool? Uh, yep, tool I use a number of times. There is no problem, but mostly this is the 9 mm cannulated reamer. I have made it and they are very sharp in the end so that we can go very easily. That is very side cutting is less, a forward cutting is much more in that case. So I am I, I am just interested in putting the that 9 mm nail into the medullary canal just to uh, as a reduction tool. You can pass a, that uh, tool also. Uh, F tool also, it's a very good because it has an angle and so that we can negotiate the guide wire. So that is much better and it is smooth also. Um, I think I just so I if I remember, I have shown that last time. I'm not sure. I'll just show this. Can you see my slide? Yes, yes. sir. Yeah, here is this is a fracture. This is this is only one fracture. So with the sand spin. First and the foremost is this is this is fully rotated. Exactly, this is the manure which I wanted to tell. Sorry? This is the manure which I wanted to tell. Yeah. So with the time spin, I am rotating it. And now you can see with the tip of the trochanter going there, I am passing the guide wire. And you can see in the AP and the lateral view, this is there in the position which is going. So now this is the sand spin you can see and I'm, I'm internally rotating and only now we are talking about the proximal fragment. So here it is. It is going in the direction and the sand spin is holding it. It, it. This is flexed. This fragment is flexed fully. So before the reduction, it is flexed. So I am putting it in a lateral view in a flexed position of the proximal fragment. So it is anteriorly lined with the upper segment. And I am completely disregarding the lower segment now. So this is doing it in internal rotation and passing the guide wire now. I'm passing the guide wire now. And the guide wire is now in the proximal fragment. And this has been kept internally rotated with the sand spin. So now this is the F tool. I think I have seen this, shown this last time. But this is the F tool. I'm trying to pass the guide wire is not getting reduced. But the proximal fragment can be read independently of the distal fragment prior to the final reduction to avoid eccentric rimming of the posterior cortex affects anterior angulation of the final reduction. Now having reamed this part now, now you can push in the, the, this is the reducer. You can put this reducer. This is the one which will manipulate the proximal fragment. So you put in the reducer. Now having put the reducer in that proximal fragment after reaming, nine millimeter. Now this is the F tool. This is the F tool. These two hangs. They are manipulating it, the femur in a way. So that you you are you are you are trying to get in the same line. So here it is. I have manipulated with the F tool. You can see these are the wings of the F tool. Fracture is reduced and the guide wire is through. And now once the guide wire is through, the nail is through, and the, and here it is nine months, the whole thing is held up. Now you see in this X-ray, which I want to show, the healing is all medium. I have not done the graph. This is the healing is all medium. Lateral healing, you can see, is still not complete. And it will happen slowly. <laughs> the whole healing is medium. Yes, Dr. Yes, what is your favorite way of making an entry? Using a guide bar and then over it, use an all. That's right. Yes, Dr. Sangeet, now. Uh, sir, my, I don't know something is wrong with my... Uh, view, but uh, uh, my face will not be visible, but I'll be able to share the screen. Can I face the boss? They can't. 
<laughs> yeah, you are the scene. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, this lady was 73 years old, had a hip fracture. And uh, this is about uh, long back. This is how it was fixed. Uh, interop, everything, it was a positive reduction. This was done, I think, 10 or 12 years back. So it was a normal reduction, a neutral reduction, not a positive reduction. And post-operatively, you can see the drainage tube there and the fracture has got uh, collapsed, a significant collapse. Uh, and then... That down circle, Sangeet, which you have made, Yes. So uh, you can see. Yeah. Alendronate fracture? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, she was on alendronate for almost four, three, four years then. And uh, <clears throat> you can see that uh, there is a hypertrophy of one of the cortex, usually the outer cortex. And as against the insufficiency fractures, they are usually seen on the inner side, the medial side. So this was a typical beaking of the outer cortex, thickening of the outer cortex. And then you can see uh, a line across at that level in the subtrochantric area. So this is how it was. And <clears throat> the, uh, we come back to the fracture. So it got displaced, rotated, because this was a basal fracture where uh, uh, neither the trochanters are attached to the proximal femur. And this is how it got rotated. And finally, uh, she required a hemi replacement since her activity level was very low. Again, you can see what has happened. Uh, <clears throat> this is a bipolar. The trochanter was a separate fragment here. It got separated. So that is how it was fixed by wires and a cemented prosthesis, cemented stem was used here. Now, uh, look at that uh, lateral cortex here. Now, she was all right. Uh, this is about uh, some 2013, I think. July 13, yeah. Yeah. So, this is how it, uh, the tuberosities, they all heal. She was doing all her day-to-day -day activities. And you can see here in 2013, what has happened to that outer cortex. So, this is stable. It has not progressed in those three, four years. And uh, <clears throat> in 18, that is five years post-op, again, uh, the beaking is seen. That line is not visible clearly here in this X-ray. But she didn't have any, sub any symptoms. The range of movements were good. She was able to walk without any support. And <clears throat> this, is his, this is her enlarged view. We can see that again, that line is still there existing. And uh, in the lateral view, again, you can see that, but it exists only in one cortex. Again, till 18, she didn't have any symptoms. She could walk without any support. And then in December 20, eight years after observing that uh, atypical area, uh, so she had a fracture exactly at that same level. While walking at home, she just had a trivial trauma and the fracture line propagated to the medial side and she had this fracture. So we suspected that eight years back, but uh, patient Mark was not willing for anything. And that was an incidental finding in the post-operative uh, X-ray. So at that time when we operated, otherwise we could have used a longer stem prosthesis. We were not aware of that at, at that time. And uh, this is how it looks like that atypical fracture uh, uh, as against a normal fracture, which has a ragged edges. And it has a thick sclerosis. You can see the amount of cortex here. This is the hypertrophic cortex. And this is how it looks like when you open the fracture. That is the thickness of that outer cortex, which is not normal. So she was fixed with a hook plate, a uh, locally made long plate, a periprosthetic fit. We haven't changed the prosthesis because the stem was stable. Even the hip, uh, everything was all right. 
so the fracture was distal to the tip of the prosthesis and since it was a transverse fracture we used all the devices to compress that fracture and we achieved a good compression uh, plating <clears throat> so so this is at about 3 months she uh, now walks with without any support and that fracture after 6 months has shown a good healing so this is uh, one entity which you should be aware when you see that so this is at 6 months so now that fracture line has completely disappeared the thickening of the cortex is still there and we have not grafted but that is how she there is a excessive uh, newborn formation because we had done shingling there as uh, sir has suggested in non union so on the other side uh, she had a, a tip again a fracture a similar fracture in 2007 at that time we were not aware of what is this atypical fracture she had a identical thickening of the outer cortex and just after a trivial trauma she had this fracture and this is about uh, i think 13 years follow up of that how uh, uh, um, uh, that has reconstructed so so that is these atypical fractures if they are uh, fixed well they they heal in a expected time like any other fracture uh, one more case of uh, similar type i want to show you so this was a 60 years old uh, she was on osteopause for 6 years in june 11 she had severe left hip pain she came to me for that and the x ray uh, they were normal at to me it was normal at that time i didn't realize what is this entity this was in september 12 uh, now this is her left side and um, i just gave her analgesics anti inflammatory send her home again uh, you can see like the earlier case uh, there is a uh, line which is propagating on the cortex but if you see the lateral view it is through and through and in about uh, september 11 in next month she came with this fracture so uh, these fracture can be anywhere or typical fractures could be anywhere below the lesser trochanter and usually they have more or less the same pattern a trivial trauma a transverse fracture where uh, not much, it's a clean transverse fracture whenever you suspect uh, whenever you see that always suspect and look for uh, 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 them as a atypical fracture and if you see on the opposite side there are similar thickening seen on the lateral cortex so this is how it was fixed post operative x ray and uh, it started healing in 6 months we had started then by teriparatide no the at that time we were not aware of the teriparatide they were just fixed we came to know that we have to stop osteoporosis and start with teriparatide whenever you have uh, osteoporosis induced or typical fracture so that usually seen after 5 years so at one year it healed very well now uh, after some years this was the left side and on the right side after two years she came back again with the what we have seen as a findings in uh, uh, when we fixed this fracture she came with a atypical fracture again on the right side opposite side after two years so these were the findings then when she had a fracture on the left side so this is the right sided findings so always be suspicious about them so that was also fixed by identical implant and construct so atypical fracture uh, the criteria for diagnosing them 
is a presence of cortical thickening or beaking along the lateral femoral cortex at the level of proximal femur. So they have a prodromal pain in the thigh. And uh, if you take the opposite X-ray, they are likely to be bilateral. So these fractures, they are usually low energy, distant to the lesser trochanter, transfers, and they are never communicated. Localized beaking or flaring of the cortex is, you should be always suspicious about these patients because those are the initial findings. Uh, the trends, high incidence amongst the Asians and white, bilateral is about 22.5%. The rate of fracture of these, uh, of the other side declines rapidly if the bisphosphonates are stopped. More than five years of usage uh, in a patient of bisphosphonate, periodic re-evaluation uh, for the need to continue bisphosphonate therapy must be evaluated. So uh, the protocol is when you have a complete atypical fracture, surgery is mandatory. You must stop bisphosphonate, start calcium and vitamin D supplements, consider teriparatide and evaluate contralateral uh, femur. Operative treatment, fracture healing with intramedullary nail was 54% with 46% of this patient requiring resurgery. So that means the complication rate in this atypical fracture related to nailing or related to intramedullary nails are higher than the normal individual and th therefore uh, every step to reduce it anatomically to have a proper anatomical uh, to have a proper entry and reduce it well and compress this fracture is a must to achieve a good union they usually tend to have a delayed healing as against the normal fracture high failure rate uh, to qualitative bone defects causing caused by the long term use of uh, the bisphosphonates these fractures are uncommon associated with long term use of bisphosphonate incidence is 11 per 100000 after 2 to 4 years of physiotherapy patients on bisphosphonate experience a 20 to 50% reduction in the risk of hip fractures after the therapy therefore it should not be discouraged it does not outweigh the benefit of fracture prevention the risk of these atypical fracture in those patients who are using bisphosphonate is very, very low. So, so just to make you aware like uh, about the atypical fractures, what they are, how do they start, and the uh, evaluating the contralateral hip, that was the idea of presenting these cases. Sir, how do we achieve compression in this type of cases while using PFM? Uh, <clears throat> either manually. Okay, sir or using a small plate, a DCP plate, uh, before locking distal uh, screws. Oh, okay, sir. Okay. I'll continue where Dr. Uh, Dr. Sangeet has left. Dr. Sangeet is an old lady with fracture osteoporosis and when we are fixing, can we start anandonate in the beginning of fracture healing? Sorry, what is the question? Uh, his question is, can we start in an elderly anandonates, those who come to you with uh, uh, these hip fractures? Fresh fracture. Right? Yes, sir. Fresh fracture. Fresh fractures. Sorry, if I understand it, he's not talking about adenonate fracture. He's talking about a normal adult yes, yes. fracture can be start out. Alendronate. Osteoporotic treatment like alendronate. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, I think it is indicated. It is indicated. But as, as Dr. Sangeet mentioned, not more than two years or max is three years. Because the incidence of this alendronate fracture are very high after three years. First three years, the incidence is there, but it's not as big as for um, after three years. 
no just okay. because just because we are showing you so many atypical fracture that doesn't mean every osteopor every uh, patient who has received alendronate will have these fractures so they develop in some but uh, you should be aware of what are these fractures how to treat them and how to evaluate the opposite side like in sir's case also just see the opposite side yeah here this patient came uh, and somebody treated the fracture <coughs> what is the point of entry <coughs> <coughs> And you can see it to try to put in the allograft also. Point of entry been for him. <laughs> That's the reason this is in mass reduction. <laughs> this is in mass reduction. And you can see in eight months' time, the fracture is still like this. And you can see back, if I go back, See, the fracture is here. <coughs> and the PFN screw also comes the same place. So he has very rightly put in this. He, he tried to do it. This is day one. This is eight months. All the graft has disappeared. And the virus which is there, it didn't allow the fracture to get collapsed here. <coughs> The screw started breaking and she started getting pain. This level they came to me. At this level they came to me. And first and foremost I said is, here, fix up this fracture. <coughs> this is not... <coughs> This is non-union, it can be. The first fix of this fracture. So this fracture was fixed up with the nail. As you can see, this is the new bone formation. It is occurring, so you'll have to limit out all this. And in the non-fracture, there is no fracture, is not propagating on the other side. So it's very easy. I nailed it and that problem was solved. Then I went on this side. So in this side I went about and I put the nail from piriformis as you can see and I fixed it up only with this one screw because once I put it with the piriformis I didn't want to go there and then I put in the hook plate. Put in the massive bone graft here and here. From the fracture I put in the bone graft but now with this osteopetrosis, sorry this uh, osteoporosis alendronate fracture the bone graft quality is also like that. And that's the reason it is not, not necessarily a very good bone graft. So anyway, I had put in here, this is a, I had put in this circlage wire also for whatever it was worth. And having put this, putting the bone graft, as you can see it here, all this medial bone graft is also there and the lateral bone graft is also there. This is one year, no signs of healing. But, Patient has no pain. You can see this is a magnified view for one year. This bone graft is all not seen. You can see the bone grafts here, which is not seen here. And this is no patient. Patient didn't have a pain. So one year she carried on. Every two, three months we had the x-ray. And now it is two and a half months, two and a half years. This is two and a half years. This is one and a half year. You can see there is nothing there. And two and a half years. There is a good amount of bone and you, you can see this screw is broken. And two and a half year now there is a good amount of bone which is seen here. And she is still walking about. She is totally painless. But this is the first time I found some evidence of a healing. Which wasn't there even in one and a half year here. But she continued to be in pain. Till we are, we are watching. Because this screw is broken at that one stage. So that is obviously the... The stability was not there 100%. And this is the one which has started healing. She is absolutely without anything. And so that's the reason I feel that she probably will be through. Obviously, she was uh, on a teriparatide for two years now. Already, she has finished two years of teriparatide. So this fracture says, very rightly, Dr. Sangeet mentioned, they are notorious for non-healing. So on day one, 
good healing, uh, good good reduction is the main part of it. And I didn't want to go uh, neck because I thought the screw will come here. So this part will again give pain. So I used the GT to LT. And since I, was, I decided to put the hook plate, I said the stability is going to be maintained by this hook plate also. So the way it is slowly it heals up. All these patients who have no pain and radiologically not very good, still, you can probably presume that they are going to heal up and you can continue with that. She has been walking about almost from last uh, two years. This is now about three to four months I had put her on a partial weight bearing with the crutches. And then once there was no pain, she started walking about and I didn't stop her. Now she is 100% walking as if it's a normal patient. But obviously, we are holding our fingers crossed that the healing I want it here. Whether it will happen or no, still I am not 100% sure. I had put in, as I said, I had put in the BMP also. I had put in BMP here and BMP here. And hope things will settle down. So these Ellen Ronet fractures are very notorious fractures. And I have a feeling that this is the time when you fix it up so that you don't end up into this problem. When there is no fracture, once you put in the nail, that problem is solved. That's the end of the story. But once it fractures, then the non-union rate is fairly high. Now, any oh. questions on this alendronate fractures, which Dr. Sangeet and me have told? So how do you convince the patient for the opposite side? You know, these are very highly sophisticated, intelligent people. And when you talk to them, they come to you as a second opinion. They come with uh, all the Google Google reference and everything. So when I mention that you need this, they obviously consulted each other. And then the, it was not difficult for me to convince them for the opposite side maybe. Because I said, otherwise you'll end up in the same thing. For, for, unfortunately, they didn't have the pre-fracture x-ray of this side. I said, this was exactly like this before the fracture. And I showed that that uh, outer border thickening of the bone. So this is the same thing which is here. And this will also fracture mm -hmm. if you don't undergo surgery. If you are lucky, you may not get anything. But I would feel that this is the easiest treatment for that. So I don't think that that was the problem in this. They are devoted patients at the moment. So the time this fracture gives way, then probably they'll come to you. So when you have a doubt of atypical fracture, may not be necessarily bisphosphonate associated, maybe pathological sort of fracture. Then in addition to say uh, alkaline phosphatase, parathormone and uh, benzone proteins and electrophoresis, what other uh, tests do you send? See, it is as we all know, there are many tests which are from the outer cortex are also known to occur in a non bisphosphonate manner. But there are very few entities where it happens. And all of us have seen very few once in a while. I, I would say I have seen only one of them where I felt this was not a bisphosphonate fact. But the treatment seems everything is happening the same way. I had put a putter onto the teriparatide and fortunately the whole thing held up. I had uh, I had also asked her to undergo a preventive nailing but I think they were willing to wait and see if in case things go wrong, they will undergo nailing. <laughs> but I'm not sure that every time you a paradise. After so many years, it broke down. So I think that uh, preventive fixation with the intramedullary fixation is, I feel, to me, it is mandatory to avoid a many years of a uh, problem which is there in non-union of this type. Sir, I have one question uh, with regard to this uh, typical type of subprogrammatic uh, sub factors. Uh, in such cases of uh, osteopetrosis, the marble bone disease, uh, uh, if this type of factor comes, how do you treat that? Because it, because it is very difficult to drill and dream all those things. Just a minute. 
You can see my my screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. See my screen. Yes. This is osteopetrosis, bilateral neck fever, difficult patient. I mentioned this difficult patient is because they are very, very socially, very, very uncomfortable at one stage. I'll come to that stage. Now, here was the fracture I inherited. Probably she had a virus. So somebody had tried to correct with the osteotomy to, to give this valgus. In fact, this is the way it ended up into. This is the close-up of that. It's typical osteopetrosis. And now you see what happens. This, from here, this is what happened. It broke down. This is the stage I saw. All these were the x-rays she had. And you can see this side. This is the side which broke down. Now what? As we all know, this is the abduction osteotomy. Is the treatment for this. She was very young. He was about 19 or 20 or something in that way. This is the way the, it is way high up with this sort of a fixation. So I did this abduction osteotomy. I did the abduction osteotomy and after really abducting it and making it, then only I, may, I could make it vertical and then the vortex came. Because of this sort of a fracture, this sort of a fracture, I could not get the contact till the time Almost hyper abduction was done. This large abduction was done. I went on doing it. And I did this situation. And you can see where is, this is the GT and this is where the head is. So this is what I ultimately executed it. This is it. day one. This is 11 months. This is where it is now. She is walking about, moving about. So now I could convince her for the opposite side. Opposite side which had become like this. So I said we'll do the and ha, here was the major issue why I said difficult was this gave her a lengthy. And she was most perturbed because she had just married or about to get married, and this was a long and this became lengthy. So it is it was difficult for her to socially move about and walk about. So this since it was a lengthy. And uh, ultimately, the fracture healed up. I'll come to the other x-rays. At one stage, in order to correct, now once they stabilized, I did the abduction osteotomy of the opposite side in order to correct the, uh, you can see here, so much of the adduction which was there. So I corrected this with this osteotomy, and I keep this into abduction, and I fixed it up. Now, this is where it is, 11 months. This became all right, this became all right. Fortunately, once I corrected the opposite side, the length became acceptable. It wasn't too much of a problem. It was a very minor issue. So I had operated, this is 11 months and this is five months. So six months later, I had operated this. And now this is, this is the way she's talking about. Radiological union. Is whatever you are seeing it here at 11 months, this is what you see. Not really, really complete, but still she is perfectly all right. I don't know how the way it is fixation which is occurring. And this is where it is probably held up here and it is healing up. But this part of it, I have a feeling this is held up because she is walking about and moving about. This part is held up completely. Now it is about one year or something. This is 25 year old. He was young. This is in 2019. I get there from outside Bombay. So I get the picture, I, I get the messages that she is fine. She has gone to the um, her in-laws place and she is having a reasonable comfort walking about, moving about and all. So this is osteopetrosis. Now you are talking about how do you put these screws in osteopetrosis? Anybody has any experience on this? Diamond cutting drill. The, the, yeah, you will have to keep many drills available. You will have to keep the diamond cutting drill or once you put in a drill, my dictum is to finish this one drilling, you will have to take out the drill point three times minimum, at times four times because the fluid of the drill gets blocked with the debris which comes out of that. And once it will not, not be able to cut further. You take it out, 
wash out the fluid, try to wash out the cavity here, and again start off. Again, you will go further here. And again, take it out, again, clean it out, again, go there. And then third or the fourth time, once you clean it out, you will be able to go through. It is not difficult, but you will have to keep many drills because the drills, they break down. If you have a power drill, obviously the power drill is absolutely mandatory because the hand drill will not be able to do it. They will, you will have a, too much of a toggle and so it can, chances of breaking are very, very high. But hardly ever you will not be able to drill. As you can see, five drills here and the same thing is here. Same thing is here. So all this drilling which you need to do, sequential slowly increasing drill which you have to use it here ultimately the final drill to get this sleeve and everything there and so you can see this ultimately the things become perfectly all right but you can see still on the right side still see the touching a little but the gate is reasonable before that i had the movie of the gate but that was uh, i think i have lost it out somewhere any questions to me and Sangeet on the oil? Ellen Donald. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, these are atypical fracture with sharp cutting fracture and, and usually transverse. So when you are doing intramedullary nail, you always find there is some destruction at the fracture side. We are not getting satisfied as we achieve a good reduction in the normal fracture. So is there any uh, take on this? No, there is no destruction usually. Yes, but uh, you will be all it requires is like that gap has to be reduced. Like in Sir's case, uh, yes, sir. following that nailing, there yes, in the in that area there was a significant gap. Yes, sir. Uh, the one which required revision and ultimately healed. Yes, sir. So. Uh, Usually, there is no destruction of the cortex. It is only a clean fracture line which propagates and the surface is abnormal. You don't have to excise that surface. You don't have to do anything to the fracture surface. Okay. Have I answered what you wanted? Yes, yeah, sir. So, so uh, what I'm asking, do, uh, we will always see a fracture gap. That is what you said, rather than destruction. Yes. So I think in the in the case where if you're not been able to reduce hundred percent, like in my case, the first time then whosoever had done nailing from the tip of the trochanter, so it remained in virus and onto the vector side there was a gap on the outer side because obviously since it was in virus it has to open out there. So once I put it down through the piriform fossa, and then virus was corrected. Now that gap will not be there. That the reason some some reduction will occur. But it is not a whenever you do a non-union, is never a hundred percent bone contact which you never see. Even if you use a compression device in a non-union, yes, you will never see the bone uh, the gap eliminated completely radiologically. Because yes, if sir. there is some repair tissue which is there, which is not which is not giving you a full shadow of the bone. So that part will remain. So even if it is a transverse fracture, you have done a, with the Muller device, you have done a solid compression, but still it will not eliminate like the way the transverse fracture in a fresh fracture. After compression, the fracture gets completely eliminated. It will not get eliminated into the non-union side line. Any other questions? So for treatment of osteoporosis, do you give bisphosphonates now or only dinosumab and teriparatide? <laughs> Good question. I think theoretically, uh, as you said, the, the, very rightly Sangeet mentioned, very few of them get this complication. As you know, we used to use only drug available was alendronate, bisphosphonate. And every osteoporotic patient, we used to give that. But we didn't get this, this sort of a fracture in that large frequency. It happened in few cases. So statistically speaking, as we gave the statistics, in so many of them, you have prevented a 
fracture which could have happened if you are not treated osteoporosis. Osteoporotic fracture could have happened. But now this, this fracture which is non-treatable and the earlier phase when we advised bisphosphonate, we didn't know about this fracture. So it, it, people went on taking for seven years, eight, eight years. And we said, can you continue? My sister-in-law who came from America, which I had shown you, or probably I'll be, I'll be showing you when I talk on Avenger fracture. She, she came from America, doctor's wife. So obviously treated the best possible way. She had taken Avenger for seven years at that time. And by that time, the fractures were known. But she didn't realize, her husband didn't realize, her physician didn't realize that the Avenger was still going on for seven years. So she came in, she came in with a limp. All I said was, why are you limping? He says, no, I think this is there for a long time. I have shown to the doctors. And probably nobody had picked up that Ellen Ronet fracture. So once I got the MRI done after the x-ray, everything was perfect. And so that's the reason even in America, they didn't know. We didn't know. I don't think any one of us knew that the thing has to be only for three years. You have to give Ellen Ronet. So in those days, people continued for eight years and ten years. And not all of them had the fact. Today now, when you ask the question, I think it's a good question. I had an osteoporosis. I didn't take an injury. I'm on a bisphosphonate and I took the uh, teriparatide. Now I'm on a bisphosphonate. I think, Sangeet, if you remember that fracture radius which I had. Yes, sir. Uh, collapsed, so I took my DEXA, which was 3.2, and I was most unpleasantly surprised. I thought I'm playing around, I'm doing exercise, I'm playing golf, and still my DEXA is 3.2. So I was quite, and I took the whole course of teriparatide. Now I am on a bisphosphonate, I'm sorry, on a on an injection for olia. That is that is the tension up. So whether you will give it to the patient because it is easier. The teriparatide is an injectable thing. So nowadays with this injection prolia, it is much easier to convince the patient that six monthly one injection of uh, you take it of a denosona, which is almost equivalent to an endronate. But the even pro, even uh, even prolia, denosona also is known to give rise to this sort of a fracture. Still, it has not been seen because it has been used only for a short time. What is your attitude, Sangeet, to be used Ellen Donate or a bisphosphonate today? So, still, I give, I still give Ellen Donate at least for two to three years. Yeah, that's right. So, to the patient, we give it. I, I still give it for spectrum, three years. The spectrum of patients. Yeah. Anyway, any other questions before we wind up? It is already 10.20. I'll show a last one case. I've taken it out. I think. Am I sharing the screen? Yes. Presenter's view. I do not know whether this is my case, Sangeet's case, or Asim's case. I do not know. Sangeet, is this your case by any chance? No, Asim probably. Probably Asim. I do not think it is my case. In any case, this was the Satrak fracture. This is how it was treated. Back screw, first screw, second screw, and it, this is how it was treated. And this is how it is. Still, you can see the medial gap which is there. This is immediate post op. This is still a medial gap. You can see one, two, and four, four legs through for this sort of a factor. And still, the gap could not be stopped. And then it started bending. This is 19 weeks. Walking full weight bearing from first week, 19 weeks. So the second surgery, PFN with the plate. Now this is the this is the PFN which was used, and this was the plate which was used. 
as you can see it very well, till the point of entry is in the tip of the trochanter. So there is small amount of virus is still there. So here it is one year post-op, almost healed up. It is 14 months post-op, nicely healed up, you can see. So this double implant, I feel on day one is not a, you can see in a fracture like this, if you're putting in a nail. Today, I'll always put in a plane along with this because whatever you do, it is not possible for you to really get a good fixation. It's not possible to get a good fixation and a good medium continuity. And so the extra thing is required. And you can see this is how the plate is input. So this sort of a fixation, as I talk about the junctional fracture, Junctional factors. This is also one of those junctional factors, which is a uh, upper end and lower end, and this is commutative, which is unstable. So today, if I treat this patient, I'll treat it with the nailing, and I'll add up a hook plate or a side plate in order to make it stable on day one. It may be an sure. overkill, and I'm talking right. about an overkill, but still I feel that that is a much safer situation than to do it on a second stage. Sir, why DCS was used initially in this case? As I said, um, I, 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 as I said, I don't remember it is my case. It must be I think a Sims case or somebody else's. I don't know. But but this was a fracture where the DCS or a plate plate is a decent treatment for this. But he has mm -hmm. already gone and done these leg screws and. Uh, done two screws proximally, so that is not the, it was a fairly well executed PCS. Yes, sir. You can see it is a, there is no virus, there is a good amount of virus, but the main issue was big amount of gas here. Yes. So whether with this leg screw, bone graft here, or a small fibula inside, or a, as Dr. Mukti is putting it, a change inside, whether it could have solved the problem on day one, I'm not 100% sure. Yes. Because otherwise, I think it is very well executed surgery. Yes. Thank you. Okay, friends. Any questions before we wind up today? Hello. Yes. Hello, hello. We wind up. Is there any difference between gap across fracture side or destruction across fracture side? Is there any difference? Can you repeat the question? Yes, sir. Sir, is there any difference between gap across fracture or destruction across fracture? On the day one when you operated commutative fracture like the last fracture, whatever mm -hmm. is the gap, it is a surgical gap. No, that bone is crushed out or it has not been 100% reduced because it was so badly communicated. So when you are talking at destruction, that's a totally a different situation altogether. We'll come, I think, in the, in the time to come, we'll be showing those cases also. Okay. Now it is already late to hunt out the question. Any questions? Sangeet, do you want to add up anything? No, nothing, sir. <clears throat> Vasudev, you are there? Are you there? Sangeet, I think there was an issue last time we discussed. Why in a Elendronet fracture, it starts mm. on the lateral side? And Dr. Patik Shah has a, some good uh, explanation, theoretical explanation, which is there. Patik, can you please explain? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, like we have already seen that the fractures start healing from the medial side and medial side congruity is very important. It is only because that medial side has full of osteoblast and the lateral side is more in osteoclast. So, osteoblast... Normally, 
on the medial side there are more osteoblasts and the lateral side there are more osteoclasts. Is that what you think? Yes, sir. Sir, because uh, it is mostly that the compression site and the tensile site tensile site uh, phenomena. Wolf's law. Yes, sir. So that is why medially we have more osteoblasts. That is why the bone forming cells start union on the medial side. And like the bisphosphonates and the denosumab, which inhibits the osteoclast activity. So their uh, lateral side, the osteoclast cells are more. So their activity is inhibited. That is why we start to see the fracture more on the lateral cortex due to bisphosphonates and uh, the denosumab. Thank you, Patrick. Thank and you, sir. I think he had sent me the literature of that, which has been well documented in the literature. What is he talking about? Patik, can you share with me also? Uh, sure, sir. I'll forward it to you as well. Thank sir. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, friends. Anything else now? And I'll, I think we have finished with the sub -prop today. I don't think anything is remaining. We have really teased it out completely. So no more hip, no more hip fractures now, sir. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so now we go to the shaft, shaft and the other fractures now. Now the what is happening is I think the yeah next week yeah call Thursday I am there. I think we will need to meet there. Okay. Good night. Sir. Good, Good night. Good night. The second we'll talk it over on phone after this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.